the question or the halls for restructuring. I know, whatever that means to you, but it's been making the rounds lately and there's been different reactions, including the one from the presidency as well. Well, this morning we've got uh, two gentlemen joining us to weigh in on that subject matter. Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed is the spokesperson, eminent leader summit on national reconciliation and healing. He's also the spokesperson for the Northern Elders Forum. He joins us from Abuja. Good morning and thank you for joining us today, sir. Good morning. Thank you. All right. We will also have uh, Dr. Zouak Bonnet, who is a historian and a researcher, Center for Population and Development, but he'll be joining us from Kaduna as well today. Thank you very much. The pronunciation of the name is Zouakou. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Yeah. We noted. All right. Let's start with the top of Ahmed on this one. Well, it appears this conversation just won't go away. It takes different shape, different form. Uh, the National Assembly doing something, amending the law. They believe that perhaps may answer the question. We put up a poll question, and people particularly wanted referendum to be included in the laws. But then this question of restructuring that uh, different groups talk about, what is your opinion about it? Um, well, thank you for inviting me to this program. Um, just a s slight correction. I speak for the Northern Elders Forum, which is um, affiliated to the Northern, uh, to the Nigerian Elders uh, um, Forum. Um, restructuring, as you said, means uh, many things to many people. Um, it's, uh, it's a call to revisit the foundations. Um, of the nation, uh, the structures and the processes of governance, uh, the management of the economy, the management of security. Um, and it basically draws attention to the fact that the Nigerian state can do a lot better in terms of its operations than it is doing. Um, uh, if you get 10 people in a room who actually do have clear ideas about what they want or what they mean by um, restructuring, you're likely to get 10 different interpretations. But we are very clear what it means is that we need to look at our constitution, look at the way it provides for the, the, the Nigerian state, the federating units, allocates responsibilities and power, vital, the work of vital institutions, or the, the failure of vital institutions to work, um, and, and how we can improve them. Uh, and it is also a call to the fact that the Nigerian state just isn't working very well. Uh, the key, the two basic functions of the state is to secure citizens and provide for their welfare. Now the Nigerian state is failing on both, on both counts. So restructuring for us means addressing those failures and identifying ideas and suggestions and changes that can actually feed into the process of improving them. We recognize the, the role of the National Assembly. We recognize the role of the uh, presidency. Um, and uh, where we believe that they can be useful in, in, this, um, in this venture, we will work with them if, if they work with us. Uh, where we believe that we need to um, generate and, and increase uh, popular support behind the call for restructuring, we will do so. Uh, what is important for us is that Nigerians should understand that uh, when, when we de make demands for restructuring in the country, we are not necessarily saying uh, that the government is deliberately uh, causing uh, the problems. There are cumulative issues. There are um, matters that are, should have been addressed a long time ago. They haven't been addressed. There have been many conferences whose com uh, implementation recommendations have not been implemented. They need to be implemented. Uh, we, we, we believe Nigerians should never tire about demanding that their country must be made to work. Mm. If the government is not going to do it on its own, it, if it needs assistance, if it needs some pressure from us, we, be, we believe we can provide that pressure. Well, uh, Dr. Bonnet, I mean, is that your own understanding as well of what restructuring means or should be? Well, uh Thank you very much. I wanted to add something that I'm the national coordinator of uh, 
the autochthonous ethnic nationalities, especially of the northern states, covering most of the Middle Belt, all of the Middle Belt, in fact. Uh, my, our understanding of restructuring is that Nigeria has carried so many structures from the colonial period, in fact, some of them predating the colonial period into the present, and that there are various structures, uh, not just the Nigerian state, uh, but there are structures of subordination and superordination uh, over people, uh, over peoples, over communities, and so on. Uh, the failure of the Nigerian state, as far as we are concerned, is the failure of the Nigerian ruling class. Uh, but in terms of the restructuring, uh, we want to see a situation, yes, where the federating units are uh, revisited. For, for instance, uh, we believe that we need to create more states in uh, states where the local government uh, areas don't reflect the population and the, the land size, these are the other states. We want to see those uh, uh, local governments revisited. Uh, we want to see constitutional changes that enable us to increase or reduce states. Uh, we also want to revisit the issue of uh, uh, constituency delineation. We want to see the issues of the economy in terms of uh, fiscal federalism revisited. Uh, we have a, an overloaded federal government that uh, does not even perform half the functions or even a quarter of the functions it has uh, aggrandized to itself. Um, we want to see some uh, restructuring down the line. We want to see improved security uh, because the federal government has accumulated every single security onto itself. Unlike in the First Republic, where we had uh, Nigerian police, we had uh, Northern police, we had uh, provincial police, we had NA police. Uh, apart from a few complaints that they were overdoing their thing, uh, we cannot no longer, even the, the controversy over SARS shows in fact that the police, if left without proper checks, would always con uh, overdo their thing. So okay. it isn't, uh, 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 we want to see a, an economy where the, the Land Use Act is removed from the Constitution and the control of land resources return to the communities. We okay. want to see true federal, I mean, uh, uh, fiscal federalism, where resource control is re-examined hmm. and so on. And then the various uh, responsibilities of the various tiers of government revisited. We want to see truly autonomous, functional local governments because uh, Nigeria is too big for you to say you want to rule, run it from one center. And uh, we have so many groups and so many communities that don't even feel the presence of government. All right. Let, let, let's, let me uh, ask um, Dr. Ahmed, um, well, with what you have said and what the two of you have said so far, gentlemen, uh, Dr. Ahmed, it would seem like the word restructure means that Nigeria once worked there was a structure that sustained the system. Where you stand, at what point did we miss it? At what point did the structure wobble that we need to now restructure to make it work? Well, we, we need to be uh, very clear about the history. Um, uh, the Nigerian state has always gone through restructuring. It was never a process that began and ended. Um, we've changed tremendously from being a colonized people to being an independent people, having three regions, then having four regions, then having 12 states, then having 19 states. So restructuring has been part of the DNA of, of Nigeria. So there's nothing new about saying restructure. Um, what the current calls um, suggest is that uh, we need to now revisit, for instance, the 1999 constitution. 
uh, which, which um, uh, clearly shows major areas of dysfunction. Um, uh, and it can be done. Uh, many attempts have been made. Uh, some of them uh, have produced excellent suggestions and ideas. Um, there are a few issues that have come up since some of those conferences have been concluded that suggest that we need to also situate this restructuring in the context of contemporary challenges and realities, national security, management of security, management of poverty, um, dealing with issues that divide the Nigerian people rather than unite them. Those things need to be factored into, into the process. So it's, it's always been uh, an agenda for Nigeria. And there's okay. nothing wrong with that. Nations yeah. must accept uh, to, to revisit how they live. Uh, communities that form the Nigerian state have a right to ask sometimes for, for changes, for amendments, for improvements in the manner we, we exist. There's nothing wrong with this. What is wrong is where governments at a specific historic time say, no, we don't want to hear anything about restructuring. Hmm. Or when we draw attention to the fact that the process adopted is insufficient. For instance, we in the Northern Elders Forum and in other fora where I belong have drawn attention to the fact that we recognize the role of the National Assembly to amend the Constitution and, and the executive arm of government to amend the Constitution. What we uh, complain about is that the process in the past has produced very little. The restructuring we're talking about is a lot more fundamental, a lot more basic. It deals with fundamental manners in which the nation, uh, the parts of the country relate to each other, how responsibilities are shared, some issues that have become really challenging in terms of security, in terms of development, in terms of okay. management of poverty, in terms of the plural nature of the Nigerian state. That's just, what just, just one moment, about. just one moment, we, Dr. Ahmed. The National just, just one moment, Dr. Ahmed. Yeah. Uh, one of the things you alluded to the other time uh, while you were speaking just now is that part of the effort to restructure Nigeria over the years has been in the creation of states. And of course, uh, uh, Dr. Bernard also referenced that. How helpful in your opinion, has the creation of states been uh, over the years in helping to put Nigeria on a stable footing? How helpful? Well, I would say that it's almost inconceivable that a nation like Nigeria would not have been a federation anyway. Um, there's no way a nation as large as we are, as complex as we are, as diverse as we are, as plural as we are, would not have been a federation. So it wasn't right from the beginning from, right from the beginning, it wasn't a mistake to create a, Nigeria as a federal state. What is, um, what is important is to pay attention to the manner in which the, the federation is working. Um, there must be fundamentals that it must meet. Um, the federating units need to feel comfortable that they exist as um, valuable pillars on which the federal system exists. You must address this, this dynamic uh, between the center and the federating units. Uh, uh, states are so, made up so, of people. So, just just uh, one moment, Dr. Amin. Just, just one Where? moment. Just one moment. Um, sure. I, I like it to be clear on this. Uh, when Nigeria began, we started with three regions. We could just as well pass as three states. It became four in 1963 with the creation of the Midwestern region. And the military you know, broke it all down to 12, on and on and on. I'm saying that from three or four states, if you like, or regions in the 60s until the 36 states that we have now. How helpful has the dividing of the different states into what we have now, how helpful has that been in helping Nigeria to remain stable? Well, if you link stability with the number of federation units and the center, um, that's one way of looking at it. But the, a better way of looking at it is to say, what do these states do in relation to the center? How much power do they have? How, many, how much resources do they have to actually function as effective federation units? Um, numbers are a function of um, practical utility. See, you can have um, six states, you can have 12 states, you can have... 20 states, you can even add more, more states. The question really is, what are those states supposed to do? Right now, no one would dispute that the federal government carries too much responsibility, most of which it doesn't discharge, has too much more resources than it needs, 
um, a, a lot of which is abused, um, and, and it's not well run. And it has become a focus of intense competition, the type of competition that makes the political system unstable. Everybody wants the presidency. Everybody wants to go to Abuja. Abuja is everything. This is wrong. So I don't want to focus only on numbers. If you want numbers, there are people who tell you 64 states will function. There are a number of people who tell you just simply create this informal um, geopolitical zones, the six of them, create them into states. But that's not really the issue. Whether it is six or 10 or 60 or 36 as we are, what we really want is to define the roles and the responsibilities uh, of the federating units uh, and the center and make sure that they are actually equipped and, and structured in such a manner that as a state, it can do a number of things. For instance, the issue we've just covered, policing is a fundamental issue. Here we have a situation in Tuka in a country where we just, you just finished interviewing the Commissioner of Police of Lagos State. And there's a huge outcry about police, about the way police is structured, the way the police functions. In the north where I come from, you could spend three days with bandits ravaging communities and you will not see a single policeman. Something is wrong with the way the country is structured uh, to provide security for citizens. So we need to revisit some of those issues. Should we have subnational police? Um, should we have some, a lot of some of the money uh, that goes to the federal government go to the federating units? I think that's really the way to look at this. It's not the numbers. It is what the numbers do or fail to do and what the centre does or fails to do. Clearly, the way the, federate, the federal system in this country is, no matter what the intentions in the beginning were, it's not working. It's not working, not just because we have leaders who, who do not believe that they live in a federal system and therefore um, they should operate as if they are federating units and there's, there's a center that is accountable to the units as well as to the Nigerian people. And also because we have federating units that are very content to say, look, what do you want us to do? We don't have money, we don't have police, we don't have the military, it's all Abuja, it's all Abuja, it's all Abuja. And then Abuja just simply says, no, 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 you have your responsibilities. And Nigerian citizens are left in the lurch. You don't know whether the problem should be solved from Abuja. Your governors keep telling you, there's little, little money coming from Abuja. No police commissioner will take instructions from me. The military will not do anything unless the commander-in-chief of the armed forces instructs them. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces sits in Abuja, doesn't instruct them to do anything. Um, and so citizens are left. So there must be things that we can do. And that's why I don't want to get bogged down in this argument about whether 36 states are adequate or whatever. Political engineering must be informed by realities on the ground. Speaking of things we can do, let, let's take it uh, to uh, Dr. In, uh, Kaduna and you know, explore this further. Now, from the government's perspective, really, do you, a lot of people believe that this government is not really doing much about restructuring in court. But some would also point to the statement the president made uh, last year, uh, saying that, you know what, at this point, we must... Uh, go the way of true federalism. So there's that statement, and there's a recent one that people are referring to, and the big question is, seeing the government's, well, disposition, the government's body language, which a lot of people talk about, would you say that the government is indeed ready for this conversation? That's Dr. Bonnet. Yeah, that's Dr. Bonnet, by the way. Please. Um... You know, we find ourselves in a situation where the government goes against what the people want and the people cannot do anything about it because of the structure that we operate. The federal government is far away over there the people cannot hold them accountable for their actions and inactions. They come up and make a statement without people uh, having some ways of ensuring that the views that the federal government or the state government or the local government pervades reflects the will of the people. And that is one of the issues that 
we have in the issue of uh, restructuring. Um, some people have argued that all we need is good governance. Uh, their own conception of good governance is pursuing their own peculiar or group interests. While everybody complains, they will tell you they are doing well. They are doing very well. So you have no way of ensuring that they listen to you. And that indeed, when they listen to you, that they respect your views and do something about it. That is about one definite issue. One definite issue. Now, 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 when we go to the issue of relating that to really can ask is, Really is the National Assembly the National Assembly presently capable of acting capable of acting independently independently of the executive of the executive of the now uh, just a moment we have a challenge with the audio there's uh, feedback but why we'll try to fix that let's uh, let's take this back to abuja uh, dr baba ahmed he brought in the national assembly and interestingly that that was where the conversation was going to because a lot of people say uh, this job of restructuring rests mainly on the national assembly well there is that plan uh, to review the 1999 constitution which you say is at the center of this restructuring also. So I see the strings coming together here. So looking at this move by the National Assembly to review the 1999 Constitution, there are 13 thematic areas that have been put out. Would you still say that the government is still not really focusing on ensuring that this is done? Um, the, uh, if, if we were uh, content with the um, the history of constitution amendment in the National Assembly, and we have confidence that uh, the National Assembly will produce something substantive and, and genuine, and will address actually address the problems on the ground rather than um, dish out palliatives that will be entirely at the discretion of the presidency and state assemblies. Um, we wouldn't we wouldn't be raising our voices. Uh, on um, improving, uh, increasing the pressure uh, on the National Assembly to um, uh, on 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 other other methods of making sure that restructuring takes place. Look, the current constitution has been in place since 1999. How much of it do you think uh, has been amended um, substantially, or even to a point that shows you that it is capable of being amended? I can tell you this, less, less than 5%. I served for two years in the last, uh, in the eighth Senate. I, uh, I know how much work they put into amending key parts of the constitution, close to 40 amendments were uh, proposed. A lot of them very good. They go to the heart of a lot of the problems that we're dealing with. Um, and I know what came out of that, very little. Uh, so much is entirely dependent on the discretion of, of uh, those in power today. And the problem is people in power today tend to equate the call for restructuring as um, evidence of their failure. It is not. You have to distinguish between governments and the nation. The nation needs to be restructured. The fact that you are the president or governors or your National Assembly people doesn't necessarily mean that you own the nation and, and, and therefore, no one has a right to come in and say, listen, guys, something is wrong and is a lot worse than you think. So um, what we are asking is that we have, we believe the National Assembly has a role. Well, of course, we, they, um, uh, they have to do something. But this time, they, they, sh they need to do something very serious. What we will do is we will raise public awareness we will raise public sentiment around the need to restructure. We will try and channel a lot of these very angry um, uh, demands that people make, ultimatum and threats that the presidency gets so worked off over. We will try and channel them into something constructive and responsible and try and see if we can reduce a lot of the anger and the frustration into doable, practical ways in which the National Assembly and the Presidency and State Assemblies can actually affect restructuring. And if you want to change the meaning of restructuring by saying constitutional amendment, fine, let's amend the constitution. 
Let's amend the manner in which the center and the federating units work. Let's amend the manner in which the federating units exist. Let us see the degree to which we can allow people to feel more at home being Nigerian. Let's see where security is failing. Let's see where the economy is failing. Let's see where poor leadership emerges. Why? What is wrong with our national electoral process? Is it just INEC or is there something in the political system that makes it difficult for elections to be credible? Something yeah. is wrong. Right, Dr. Ahmed, you why know... Do, why do bandits... We, right, well, we'll come to that as well as we progress. But we've had several attempts, you know, at trying to solve some of these problems by way of conferences. And they never just seem to materialize. What do you think is a fundamental problem? Why are we not able to address that? I think basically because the people who convene these conferences do so largely uh, for, for reasons other than the genuine need to address the fundamentals of the Nigerian federal system. Um, uh, the, there, are, there have been conferences in the past uh, and you, you get a lot of excellent uh, ideas from very well-meaning Nigerians uh, and they come here and they spend a huge amount of time and we spend a huge amount of money in support of this. At the end, you find one or two things that have been built in there that suggest that this is all about personal ambitions of those, those people in power. Or there are issues, there are no-go areas, they don't want this discussed, we don't want this to happen. You cannot stop Nigerians from demanding that something must be done. Uh, it needs to be done, if indeed it needs to be done. The caveat is that whatever we do, restructuring must satisfy the minimum requirement of making sure that every Nigerian feels comfortable with it. Mm. And there are minimum reducible areas that there is a national consensus on. Those exist. But if you just leave it to government, as it's, you had the Obasanjo conference, you had the Jonathan conference, you had a lot of conferences, you had a lot of reports. I mean, when, there's a room full of reports, excellent ideas. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We're not saying have another conference involving thousands or hundreds of people from all over the place. If, if we have to go that way, there's no problem. The Nigerian state should fund this. If it's not going to fund that, we can find a way to do so. We don't need the permission or the approval of the government to meet as responsible citizens to discuss what needs to be done. Mm. But you ask the question, why have all these conferences and other these efforts to amend the constitution, to restructure the country failed? They have failed essentially because governments have usurped the responsibility to define what needs to be done. And that is why in the Northern Ireland Forum we said, no, this time do it differently. Go to the people. Reduce the, some of the, a lot of these complex areas to areas where Nigerians understand. What do you want to see done with the manner in which the federating units and the center operate? And it's not difficult, but people will say, oh, Nigerians will not understand that. Nigerians will understand that. Nigerians understand poverty, Nigerians understand insecurity, Nigerians understand when they feel that their country is not just being just and fair to them. Mm. And, and that's the only way to do that. Don't just leave okay. it to politicians. Politicians are elected by people. We okay. sent them there. Yeah. And uh, there's Dr. no Amit, reason why we've tried yeah. this before it has failed. We've tried mm. this before. Yeah. Uh, just one moment, and let me ask... this is why uh, we need to, to try a different track. Absolutely. Uh, let, let me ask uh, Dr. Bonat this. Uh, this whole conversation about you know, restructuring, uh, ha as we have discussed here and has also been refer referenced, it depends on who is talking about it. For some, it's a change of the uh, a review of the system of government that we have. Some have even alluded to the fact that in the First Republic, all the regions had their own constitutions. Even the Midwestern region, when it was created in 63, it also had its own uh, constitution. And of course, the federal government had its own constitution, all of them working, you know, hand in gloves. And then some others have said, look, why not have a review of uh, the entire system, the presidential system that we have now. Then we had a parliamentary, now we have a presidential. What if we have a hybrid of the two, something that is peculiar to Nigeria, not just a wholesale democracy that we have? What would you say to them? 
Well, you know, um, well, you know, I'm glad I'm back into the, the conversation. I was giving you a I was just uh, accompanying you. Um, 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 see, um, see, there are conferences, there are conferences, resolutions, uh, Dr. Bonat. Recommendations, I'm coming. Okay. It, it seems like we are getting some feedback from your end. I don't know if there is any other device that is on. Could you kindly mute it so that we can hear just you? Okay. Okay, while we're trying to sort that out, I, I, I think I'll take that same question to Dr. Ahmed. So what do you think, Dr. Ahmed? Uh, do you think, what, what do you make of a, a hybrid a presidential or parliamentary system or system of government that is peculiar to Nigeria. Some have also, you know, referenced that, you know, the, the, the presidential system or parliamentary system being practiced in one country doesn't necessarily uh, reflect the same, exact same that is being practiced in other parts of, of the world. Same system, but peculiarities in different uh, states of uh, the world. What's your take on that? Well, I think you're right. Um, sometimes we use words and concepts very, um, very <laughs> lightly. People think there's one presidential system um, and every country uh, that runs it uh, runs a similar system. We can and we must define, design a, a system that fits Nigeria. Uh, we have the intellectual resource, we have the experiences, we've run a parliamentary system in the past, we've run a presidential system, we're running a presidential system. They both have massive drawbacks, they have advantages. What we need to do is to be open-minded about this. The cost of governance is un unacceptably too high for a country. Look, you have 36 governments, 37 governments, one federal government, 36 states, 774 local governments. Do you know how, many, how much money we are spending on just the upkeep of the people who are chief executives here? The president, 36 governors, chairman of 74, 774 local governments. How much money are we spending just simply to keep these structures in place? What do they do in return for all these monies that we are spending? Can we really afford this? On the other hand, if we want to go back to the parliamentary system, we need to look at it. We don't need to ape the British system or the, of, or the um, Australian system or the New Zealand system. We can design something. We, it is possible to create a hybrid. What is important is to be honest enough to open up Nigeria, put it on the table and say, what is not working? And how do we redesign the federal system in such a way that it addresses that problem? You can never entirely solve all the problems of Nigeria through restructuring or constitutional amendment. But at this stage where we are, where we are now in 2020, and with all the heat being generated, you must do something substantial. And what can you do that is substantial? Get the people who and can understand how the problems of the country arose, History is important. Get people who understand where the system is not operating well. Give them all these reports. We don't, we don't need new, more, new reports. Give them these reports. Lock them up somewhere. Let them look at the, some of these reports and extract from them what is realistic and practical. Now, there is a consensus, as I said before, for the first time, the Nigerians agree on the need to revisit the foundations of the federal structure. Right. There is. It's genuine, it's real, and if the government keeps dismissing it, then it means the government is living in denial. Well, I hear okay, we so have sorted... Let us look at those minimums. Right. I hear we have sorted Dr. Bonnet's uh, audio now, so let's, let's make this work. Now, Dr. Bonnet, if you can just merge those two questions we asked you earlier, plus your response, really, uh, please go ahead. Well, you see, well, the, you see issue the issue that, um, that um, I, was going to I was going to check, was going to check of where Dr. Dr. Baba was uh, discussing. This audio is proven stubborn this morning. Uh, we'll give you one last try, so just, just a moment uh, as, as we move on. So, uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed, uh, I know you've had to, you know, pretty much handle this on your own. But I mean, the issues at hand, basically, 
is about fiscal federalism, federalism. There's talk about states creation, which I mean, you think may or may not work. And there's a question about what we need to do now moving forward. But just to give Nigerians a sense of how maybe urgent or otherwise this is, just how close to a tipping point are we? I mean, how, is there like a timeline? If we don't do this in the next one month or six months or one year, just how close to that tipping point are we for we to take this serious? I want to avoid this, this tendency of scaring Nigerians into um, doing something with the government. Um, you've, you've seen how exasperated uh, the presidency is becoming, they are now hitting out. The last time we met under the President Obasanjo initiative, um, the presidency called us terrorists um, for suggesting that the National Assembly initiative is not sufficient. Um, uh, and then you, you are beginning to hear people are saying, look, restructure or we get out. Um, the Pastor Adeboe um, two day, a few days ago said, you must restructure out the nation uh, has no future, and the presidency came out and said it's, um, I can't remember the words, but they are not very charitable. Um, you said how close are we? I don't want to talk about tipping points. A nation is a living thing. Um, it lives or ceases to live on, on the degree to which it is willing to revisit what is wrong with it. It's like a human being. If you're ill, you go to the hospital. If you keep ignoring illnesses, and ailments, and symptoms, um, something seriously happens to you. At this stage, um, given the fact that basic functions of the state are not being performed, mm. we have a huge population, 250, 200 million people. Um, we have massive issues about the way our economy functions, the sources of revenue, the way we share these revenues. Um, we have issues about security uh, that affects everybody. We have issues about um, how we live with each other. Um, uh, there are Nigerians uh, that can't venture and go to some other places yeah. or they have to sleep with um, their eyes open. Um, this is not the country that our forefathers um, imagined. Yeah, and if, if I could jump in at this point, Dr. Ahmed. Wrong in saying. So could you then tell us then, yes. give us your ideas. How do we get to sit together and address these challenges? That's exactly what we're doing. There are two or three groups that I'm a part of that are made up of eminently responsible Nigerians, a lot of them elderly, um, sincere, honest. Those people are talking to each other. And this is a very, very positive move. For the first time, the North, the West, the South, the East, everybody is coming together. And we're saying, we need to talk. First of all, let's lower the hostilities that we've harbored towards each other. Stop blaming the North for being against restructuring. Stop um, things, seeing restructuring as an agenda for secession. The, the bottom line is that Nigeria is not working for all of us. Mm. So let's look at those things that we can all agree on. Do we need a federal system uh, that leaves everybody um, uh, uh, needing protection, needing economic development, our young people don't have jobs, um, the system that works better. Do we okay. need, uh, do, do, what can we do? What okay. can we agree on? All right. well, uh, and you, there, you, there you, are quite a number of areas. And where is it that we don't agree? And what can oh. we do? You need to rediscover the, the art, the, 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 the value of negotiation, dialogue. Mm -hmm. And you can't do this with a government that keeps saying, no, 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 no. It's only our system or nothing else. Well, as you, you said, we're, because we're already... the government is looking out the citizen. Yeah, as you said, we're already having this conversation now. Hopefully the uh, federal government will also come to the table. But let me, uh, let's try uh, to, with Dr. Bonnet, just one more time, um, hoping that we have been able to sort out the audio. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a, sorry. I'm afraid they, we still haven't been able to resolve it. But uh, let, I wanted to ask you this, uh, Dr. Ahmed. You referenced the young people the other time. They are in the majority in the country today. But you would also agree, I don't know, but it, it will probably be argued by a number of people that most of these people are disconnected from what we, what is, what, what we are even talking about right now. They don't seem interested in governance and politics and all these things because 
as Dr. Uh, as Professor Jega put it, they are demobilized and demoralized. How do we bring them on board? Because without the population of these young people, how successful can we be in this venture? Well, this is all about them. Um, whether they recognize it or not, uh, whether they are less angry enough to pay attention is, is a different issue. Um, and, and I'll be, let, let, let's be honest. If I'm a young Nigerian now in my 20s, in, in my early 30s, I've just graduated, I haven't had a job for three or four mm -hmm. years, and this, I, I will be among the lucky group. There are millions and millions of young Nigerians who have not been to school or have gone to school and they have been poorly prepared for anything else. Uh, if I'm a young Nigerian, I'll be angry. I'll be very angry uh, that I expected the, my nation to, to help me to grow up as a productive, responsible, law-abiding citizen. Um, but everything we're doing is about them. Our generation inherited a great nation. We, we, we grew up in a, in a country that worked and that gave us pride as Nigerians. And, and, and gave us the impetus now, even in spite of our age and everything, to say, listen, we can't just simply lay down and die and leave the nation uh, in tatters. The young, the young Nigeria must be giving hope. He must be giving um, faith and confidence that he, he, this country will not deteriorate and, and it can improve. And the way to do that, whether they are part of this process now or, or not, and they are very angry enough. If you talk, go to the social media and, and see how Nigerians talk about this country, you would be shocked. It is, it, it is one of the worst experiences of an elder to go to the social media. I do that a lot. And it's, I can tell you it's not a very happy uh, um, experience. But you need, to, you need to, if, if the young are not part of this process and they're not willing to bring, to come in now because they don't think it's going to yield any uh, any a dividend or um, uh, interest, let, let's do it ourselves. We, we have a fairly good idea about where we went wrong. We have a fairly good idea of what we need to do to fix where we're going. And we have a fairly good idea of the sacrifices and, 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 and uh, the, the, the other things that we need to do to make sure that at least we don't leave a legacy for All the right, problems then. that we're dealing with for the next generation. So okay. the young should come on board. They must right. be aware of what we're doing. They it's, need to support it. Uh, it's always a conversation that you know, we'll keep having uh, as long as uh, it's necessary. But we do thank you very much indeed for your perspective this morning, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. And then um, Dr. Zuwaku Bonnet, we unfortunately were not able to uh, at least uh, sort some of those out. But we also do thank you for your perspectives as well this morning. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some feedback coming through from you from the social media. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, I know. You remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. Not exactly a happy experience. Interestingly, I just saw a, a comment he made and responded to someone saying, you know what, let's stop this conversation <laughs> so you can keep your energy. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, boy. Well, we have Victor. Victor always uh, message says, names have a way of influence. When you're a hammer, everything appears as a nail. Force should have no place in the name of the Nigerian police. Well, it's oh. in the constitution, right? So it's in the name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have to amend the constitution to amend, to that, amend name. that name. Oh, yeah. And royalty says the commissioners have nothing to offer on this issue on ground. That's talking about the police, of course. They activate their actions based on IGES directive. So I think the IG is the one you can put a call through and address the issue or invite him down. So I guess that's an invitation to the IGP. Okay, Mr. IGP, you heard the people now. <laughs> so it's up to uh, you. Well, that sounds like the people call the IGP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Henry says the call for restructuring should dispassionately examine the homelessness of health in the Constitution. It's said to be on the residual list, neither exclusive nor concurrent. Without the federal government, Nigerians outside Lagos could die in one day from infectious epidemics. I don't understand what you mean by that, but then it's your opinion, because at least I think we, ha we have some institutions. Well, that yeah, Professor Nahena all says, in as much as we have skewed political appointments towards our ethnic groups, bloated recurrent expenditure, insurgencies, kidnappings, 
ardent corruption, electoral fraud, and absolute presidency, Nigerians will persistently clamor for proper restructuring of the state. Well, Oshinawa Kingsley quickly says, uh, let's simply go back to regional government and allow each region to control its resources. The power in the central is too enormous and the cost of governance is alarming, he says. And uh, from Ajaja David, I was humiliated by SARS. Of course, you know what he's talking about. I was driving a car already duly cleared from Kotonou with the company's name pla number plate affixed on it. I was stopped, and all they kept shouting was, flying number. Oh. Haven't heard that before either, so. No, he says, that was after the presentation of relevant documents. They pointed their guns at me, collected the car key and my phone immediately, and handcuffed me instantly. I was explaining to one of them, he shot me up, and about to throw heavy punches at me, they put me in the car and... Guys, what's the other part of it? The conversation continues on Twitter. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's like a thread of sorts. Oh, oh. Is that what you guys are doing? Scroll your I see. Oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, well, you? that's the rest of the story there. But you know what? You have to go to our Twitter handle. At Sunrise okay. Day uh, maybe yeah. as Ayo said to, he said to a politician, you need to carry people along. Yeah. <laughs> One day. And I thought, what is he thinking? <laughs> okay, well, there you go. That is the oh, show goodness. today. We well, thank you all for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain Usa. I'm Kyle Okikyo. And I'm Ayo Makere. Please do stay. Wonderful day.